Okay, so let's get started with some hands-on example around CloudFormation. In this example, we're going to create a simple EC2 instance. And EC2 instances, pretty much everyone knows about it. It's the servers in AWS that you can get on demand. We're also going to create and add an Elastic IP to that instance. And we're also going to add two security groups to it. For now, I want you to forget about the code syntax. I want you to forget about what is the content of the template just for now. We'll do a much bigger deeper dive later on in this course. What I want you to focus on is how I create my AWS CloudFormation template, how it's being updated, what happens in my AWS account, and so on, okay? So we'll see how in no time you are able to get started with CloudFormation. So hopefully in the previous lecture you did download the code, uh, it was attached in the resources, so you should have the code by now. So here is your AWS console, and I just created my account. Uh, if you don't have one, you should create one, obviously. You just tap AWS Cloud, sign up, and you have it. When you're logged in, you see this screen. The first thing I want to make sure is that for the rest of this class, just to make sure we're on the same page, I want you to work in a North Virginia US East region, and that's called US East 1. And the only reason is I want you to have the exact same setup as me, it doesn't matter when you get to work into your own region, you can change the region later on. But for this course, please bear with me and please use the US East North Virginia region, okay? So to find CloudFormation, you click on Services and then you just type in CloudFormation and this is the first link. We are being greeted by this screen which prompts us to create stack, stack set, designing a template or from existing resources. For now, we're just going to create a new stack. When we get into that screen, it asks us for a template. We can either design a template, and we'll go over that in the next lectures, or we can choose a template. We can select from some templates that they already have for us. We can upload a file to Amazon S3 or specify an Amazon S3 template URL. So what we notice is already that either we do something in the cloud or directly we have to select something that lives already in Amazon S3. So we'll choose upload a template to Amazon S3. Now if we look at the templates, we have two. We have just EC2 and EC2 with security group EIP, which is the more complex one. So we'll just start with just EC2. And you can have a look already, but what this will do is that it will create one EC2 instance in the US East 1A availability zone. And that will be a T2 micro, which is part of the free tier. So what I'll do is I'll just upload this file. For this, very easy. I choose a file and I click on zero just EC2. All right, so far so good. Then we click next and the template is being uploaded to Amazon S3 and it's being validated. Now we have to specify a stack, uh, a stack name. For this, I will call it introduction and you can choose whatever you want but I like to call things but what they are. This is an introduction, so we'll call this introduction. Next, you are able to specify some tags in your resources. And tags, we'll just add one. Um, the name of the tag will be course, and the value will be CloudFormation. Just to show you what this does when we do create these resources. We have a bunch of advanced options. We'll go over there later on. Next, here is our template URL. It has been uploaded to Amazon S3. There is no description. Here we can estimate the cost by clicking on cost. The stack name is introduction. We have a tag named CloudFormation. And that's about it. And we click on create. So here we go. We see now the screen is being populated with the stack name introduction. And it's been created at this time. And the status is create in progress. So while we wait, basically what this will do is that it will go ahead and create whatever was in that CloudFormation document, in which case what we had was just an EC2 instance. So this CloudFormation template will not go green up until that EC2 instance has been created and is working, okay? So that's why right now you see create in progress. The really cool thing though is that you can refresh obviously and you see that there's an events tab right here which tells you exactly with a timestamp how the events are going. For example, I started at 22, 29, 32, and 26 seconds later, the create was complete. 
Okay, so you can see all the events into one very nice timeline. Now, if you go to overview, there's nothing new. I put nothing, but if we go to resources, now we see that there is an EC2 instance that has been created complete, and the logical ID is my instance. So if we click on it and open it in a new tab, we get redirected to the EC2 management console. And we see right here that we have our instance type, which is just T2 micro in the availability zone that we wanted, US 1A, and it's been created. So pretty amazing, right? We just dumped a file into CloudFormation, ran the CloudFormation, and all of a sudden we end up with an EC2 instance. What's even better is that if you go to tags, we can see that this instance has been tagged with a lot of things already. First of all, there is this course CloudFormation tag that I specified during the launch. So what that means is that for your CloudFormations, any tags that you specify in the CloudFormation prompts will be applied to any resource in the stack, which is amazing. But also, you inherit three AWS specific tags based on CloudFormation. The number one is the logical ID of the thing, which is my instance. The second one is the stack ID. It belongs to my big ARN stack. And finally, the stack name, which was called introduction. So that's really cool because from a management and from a costing perspective, you have lots and lots of control over which instance is tagged with what, what it belongs to, and so on. So that's pretty amazing. So to summarize, I've created a CloudFormation template and has just an EC2 instance. Now I say, you go, you go, you go, and guess what? Things change. Your boss asks for two security groups and an elastic IP. As we can see right now, um, there are no security groups. There's just a default one, okay? And there is no elastic IP, just a, a public IP, but it was random. So let's go ahead and edit this CloudFormation template. Well, it turns out you can't edit CloudFormation templates. Instead, what you have to do is to provide a new CloudFormation template. So let's do this. We're going to click on Update Stack, and we get right back to that first screen of Select a Template. Again, we have to upload a new file. Okay, we can't edit what already existed. We have to upload a new file. And now we have one EC2 with SG and EIP. If you want to look at the code, again, we'll go on a much deeper dive uh, later on in this course. But now we have our instance, and it has two security groups, which are defined right here. But also, it has an elastic IP, and that elastic IP belongs to my instance. So, lots to take on, again, but believe me, that basically creates the resources and links them together. Okay? So, I've uploaded the file, I click on Next, and I'm going to be asked to review the cloud information name. And as you can see, this is grayed out. We can't change the name after it's been created. Okay, so if you do specify a stack name, you can't change it later. You have to delete your task stack and recreate it to change the name. Press next. And as you can see, we can add more tags. We can delete the previous ones. It's pretty cool. Okay. Anyway, what we'll do is go on next. And what we see is that uh, we can review what's happening. There's a new template URL. The stack name's the same. The tags are the same. But oh, here we go. Something happened. CloudFormations tells us there's going to be changes. And of course, there are going to be changes because we did upload a new template. But what's really cool is that we can preview what the changes are going to be. And that's really nice because if you were to change something, you really want to make sure that you're not you know, messing things around. So here we go. We're going to add an elastic IP and it says add. We're going to modify our EC2 instance, okay? And because we added security groups to it, and that change actually will trigger a replacement of that instance. So very good to know that previous one will be replaced entirely. Finally, we'll have two security groups that will be created. All right, so yeah, I'm pretty happy with these changes. I'll click on updates. And here we go. So now if we look at the events log again, the previous events are kept, but now we are into an update in progress um, event. So as I, as I refresh, we can see that the event is getting more and more populated. If 
for example, here it created my two security groups. And now it's going to create my EC2 instance. So it's going to create a whole new one and stuff. So as I let it happen, basically AWS CloudFormation figures out the order in which things need to happen. It understood that first you needed to create the security groups before you could create the EC2 instance. And that's why the security groups were created first. And then my EC2 instance was being created. So if we click on refreshing, for example, once the EC2 instance has been created, then we can go ahead and have our Elastic IP being created. And finally, once the Elastic IP is created, which might take a while, AWS will go and remove the old EC2 instance. So one more refresh. Anyway, in the meantime, what we can do is go to resources. And as you can see, now in the resources, we don't see one item, but now we see four items. We see that we have two security groups, my instance, and an elastic IP that has this IP. And that's really cool because everything was provisioned from within a template. Okay, so as we've seen here, every resources has been created successfully, and some were created somewhere updated. And then finally, in the event log, it's going to delete the old AWS instance that we didn't use, okay? So let's go ahead and review all these resources. If we go to the management console, we see that the new instance is running, but now it has two security groups attached to them. So let's just go and go to the security groups. And if you check the security groups, we can see that the group name is introduction, which is the name of my stack, and then the ID of my group and some random number. The tags are what we expect them to be. Here is the course cloud formation tag and it has the right rules we assign them to. This is my second group right here. And again, the tags are correct. The group name is different, obviously, and so on. Finally, uh, if we check something, the elastic IP parameter has been defined and we can open it. And again, obviously, you know what you guess now, the elastic IP will be exactly what we want it to be. Okay, and it will have the right association. So it's all very, 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 very nice. Um, but finally, let's look at what happened. The previous instance got terminated. So on top of like creating a new instance, AWS CloudFormation was smart enough to say, wait, 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 I'm going to terminate the old instance because my user doesn't want it anymore. And it went ahead and terminated it. So that's awesome because it just cleaned up after itself. And that's really cool. That's something we can see in the events log. And for example, here, the, the cleanup was happening and it was deleting the old instance and completing the deletes. So, so far, we've seen an, uh, an, a create, an update, and to finish this little part of the tutorial, um, say we wanna delete, say we wanna clean up what we did because we created one EC2 instance, we have created two security groups and we have created elastic IPs. So how do we go about and cleaning everything? Do I go here and, and terminate and everything or, or is there a better way? Well, in fact, there's a better way. If you go to the CloudFormation, right click and say delete stack, it will go ahead and delete all the stack resources for you, which is amazing because everything you've created through CloudFormation will be deleted with your CloudFormation. So I'll go ahead and say yes, delete. And the delete is in progress. And as you can guess, it will start deleting things in order as well. So you don't have to figure out what to delete first and what not to delete first. It was CloudFormation will figure this out for you. So as you go ahead, first will be deleted the Elastic IP, then the instance, and then finally the security groups. When all of this is over, um, basically the cloud formation will disappear and you can change the filter to go and delete it. So I'll just pause when this is done. So after using the filter and everything disappears, you can see that you can just use the filters, get back to your cloud formation template. And then you see that the event log, everything was being deleted and the delete is complete. So now if I go to my management console and just refresh, all my instances have been terminated. If I go to my security groups, my two new security groups are gone. 
and if I go to my uh, Elastic IPs, I will see the Elastic IP will be gone. So that's really cool because CloudFormation just cleaned up everything in one click. So here we just witness the power of CloudFormation for creating, updating, and deleting AWS resources in no time.